This video is recorded in 2023 as a job aid for the GISS workflow. It will cover how to create a briefing map. I've already covered the steps outlined in the Create Master Projects video. To review, I saved as on the Pro Project template and created a master briefing project, which is stored at the root of the projects folder. I've also created an ArchE landscape layout using a layout template, and I updated the dynamic text for the title and author in the map views metadata. Briefing maps need to be able to be seen from the back of a briefing area, so the symbology needs to be larger than usual, as do the labels. Instead of using the event group all layers, that come by default in the provided map view, I'll remove those and then navigate to the tools folder in the catalog pane and add the event group BAM large symbols layer. Repair the paths to the master incident geodatabase. These layers already have these symbol sizes and label sizes increased so that you don't have to spend time doing that. The base data on the briefing map should also have larger symbology and labels to be able to be seen from the back of a briefing area. I have some vector base data downloaded and regardless of the data download tool of choice, the tools usually come with a layer file to symbolize the data after download. I've taken that layer file, repaired it to the vector topo data that I downloaded, and then increased the sizes of labels and symbols and saved out a BAM layer file. I'll add in the BAM vector topo layer instead, and you can see that symbols and labels for critical transportation routes, the forest and county boundaries, names of cities and towns, and major waterways have all been increased. Looks like the event polygon is off in that layer, so I'll turn that on and update the layer blend mode to multiply. Work with your situation unit leader to determine important data and labels to emphasize for the incident. Information about where operational resources are working can be found in the IAP and 209 Incident Status Summary. These locations are likely to be referenced by an Operations Section Chief during the briefing. If you can, attend a briefing or watch one if it's streamed. Pay attention to how the map is being used. Can you read the labels? Were there any locations that the individuals giving the briefing were referencing that were not on the map? Take notes. Discuss with your CIDL potential improvements and continue to refine the briefing map. The legend needs a bit of work before calling this map complete. I'll remove all of the event data from the legend since it's duplicated. And then I'll add it fresh by dragging the event group from the map contents up to the legend contents. The label point can be turned off and the legend properties updated to make the symbol and text sizes uniform. There may be duplicate road layers to clean up, 
then you don't have to include data in the legend if it is labeled on the map. So I'll remove some of these hydrographic features since they all have labels. You may need to add some definition queries to the event data in the briefing map. If employing the situation approval workflow, only display features that have been approved. And if you've flagged any features to not display on hard copy maps using the is visible attribute field, include that in the definition query as well. The situation unit leader may ask for certain feature types to be removed from the map, and this can be added to the definition query as well, but I will not be demonstrating it here. Adjust the extent and scale if needed to include the incident area and projected growth. I've been asked to include the entire TFR, so I'll zoom out a bit. Upon zooming out, I see I have some overlapping branch and division labels. And I can see if forcing my branch labels to stack solves my issue. And that concludes the demo. Thanks for watching.